let's begin our our Easter services. Dear Father, we thank you and we come into your presence. We thank you for giving us an open heaven. We thank you for an open heaven. Lord, the fear of you is the beginning of both knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. We ask your spirit to lead us. We apply and plead the blood over our loved ones, over everything that we do. And Lord, we ask you this day to lead us from this time of open heaven till midnight on Monday. This opportunity you've given to us, we will treasure and value it. Because the most important things, decision that you make for us happen during this time. Lord, I know that the most important answers to our prayers are put together, arranged and packaged during this time of the year during these five holy days. Therefore, we come humbly to seek your face in prayers and in fasting, in supplication. We come mainly to seek your face and all other things will be added to us. We come to stand with you This afternoon, as we come to, to your presence, we ask you to minister life to us. Share your life with us, O oh Lord. Do not allow us, Lord, to be sidetracked by anything. And even when we receive what we've asked you, it will just be a motivation to reach out for higher things and to be in a higher place with you. We are not looking for a little life or one or two things and then we walk away. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Idika speaking. Hello? Okay, let's continue. That must be an oversee. Yesterday we, we dealt with um, Thou has anointed my head with oil and I began to speak to you about the two things that happen when the anointing uh, comes on you when the supernatural reaches out and touch you. I am putting together a package where which we will do sooner or later on how you can use the word of God to heal bone problem, a problem in any part of your body. How also you can pray for the angels to bring an organ that belongs to you from the body parts house of heaven into your body. But I would like us, when that time reaches, that I will begin to minister along this area, that the Holy Ghost will move in this area to tell you and to show you from scriptures how you can use the word of scriptures to bring about healing in your life. Certain things that you should avoid so that you will not go through ill health, sickness. For example, where the word of God is lacking in someone's life, it has been discovered 
that you can become totally fatigued, irritable, and uh, restless, sinful, and poor, and you can start to have degenerative diseases in your organs. It has also been known by practical experience with the Word of God that the Word of God applied to a human body spoken over you. I mean, something that you see as ordinary writing. Some, some people think the Bible is just like Shakespeare or any other holy book of the world. It's not. It's different. Because the voice of God, the person of God is enshrined in every word, in every phrase, every verse and sentence of the word of God, every chapter. The face of God, his voice is in everything you are reading in the Bible. That's how this thing is. The good, the bad, and the ugly, you see in the Bible, is part of God's progressive enterprise or entrepreneurship with the human race. That's very important. Everything you see in the Bible, Geneva, you can put that down for me. Everything you can see in the Bible... is God's progressive entrepreneurship with humanity. God's progressive entrepreneurship with humanity. That is why you can jump into the Bible and it will work for you in any generation. It never loses its authority and power. We spoke yesterday about God making you shine. Shining is the beginning and end of the anointing. When, when, when I come into contact with any human being who is born again and spirit-filled, I can tell whether it is the anointing of the devil or the anointing of the Holy Ghost. How? I look at one thing, the shining. I begin to look at another thing. Out of the shining, you have so many things I can teach on the shining forever. You begin to look at the word joy. Is the person a happy person? A joyful person? When things happen, how do the person react to event? Will tell you whether the person has an anointing of God or anointing of the devil. How do the person react to wealth and money? Do they worship wealth and money? Do they worship famous people? How do they react when a famous person comes into their midst? See, in some, in some culture, I'll give you an example. I went into a store to buy something. It belonged, that store belonged to some people from Asia. And the way I was asking for a particular kind of tea. I didn't know whether they had it there. So I asked. And the woman said, it's right there. It's right there. She shouted at me, it's right there. In a normal situation, she would have walked up there and said, here it is because it's written in their own language. The tea is written in those languages. It's not written in English. So you cannot tell which one it is. So... I said, where is your husband? He said, oh, he's not here. Oh, he's not here. 
So some other time I came back, I called that store and asked for the for the owner of the store, and the man said he was in, so I drove down there, and the woman was there. That same woman, when she saw the car that I, I drive, when she saw my kind of car, as I walked into that store, I was well-dressed, looking nice, smelling so good. Oh, she said, oh, what year is that car? I didn't answer her. Oh my goodness, are you a doctor? Are you a lawyer? Are you this? Because that culture, they worship doctors and lawyers. They worship, if you have money, they worship you. I didn't answer her. I called the husband outside and I talked to her. I said, listen to me. The way your wife is running this store, I am not advising you, but I'm telling you, this store will be run down. You will soon be closing this store. I'm serious. He said, what happened? I told him. He said he has been receiving accident. What have you done about it? What have you done about it? Little did I know that that woman, that one single woman, took that man, left that man's senior brother, and married the junior brother, fled with the junior brother. See, if somebody is able to fool you, they will never respect you. So that's why the man cannot say a word. But the, the woman was able to flee with a lot of money and use that money to start that thing for that man in order to be in control. And she was gradually destroying that business. And the man couldn't answer me. He apologized. When I look at that woman, I saw no joy, nothing. The husband is something. A lot of people that I see on earth do not have the anointing. They don't have what really make you know that somebody has the anointing is the joy and how easy they accept life. How easy things come and when they've tried, it doesn't work. They let it go and try something else. Do they sit down to be misery, bitter, and sad? No, never. Joy is the one single thing that shows me smile, laughter, and how somebody is willing to take things easy. A lot of people do not have jobs today. A lot of people cannot marry today. A lot of people do not have money in their pocket for one reason. And that reason is this. They are very, very sad people. Bitter people. They are very legalistic about life. About everything. Everything. When things happen, they are not willing to let things go. So that they can continue their life. Their rich life that God has given to you. One of my partners called me and told me what she saw in the news. Um, I don't know whether the lady is there, please. What was the man eating? This man uh, was eating um, saucer. He was eating saucer and watching television. And the wife told him not to be eating saucer. And came and began to, to, uh, to, to, she, be, she took out a knife and began to stab him. Just because he's eating saucer. How much is saucer, by the way, people of God? Over minor little issues. Some people are willing to die. I'm serious. 
All you need is to go to the internet and type in fight in church and see pastors fighting. Pastors and members fighting physically. Members and members fighting. No joy. What are you guys doing inside that building? No joy whatsoever. And then when they put Christian music, everybody is dancing and so on. Yes. Can I tell you something? Alcohol and music is one of the greatest powers of the demonic world. So why would they not dance? Demons are looking for the next Christian music to dance. If you didn't know it, know it now. Because most of what passed for gospel music is for dancing. When you hear real worship music, devils don't like it. That's why most of what we hear is gospel music. They are not gospel worship. Because real worship that has to do with their blood, their name, their power, the holiness of God. These case, people don't want those ones. That's the kind of worship that when you begin to enter into, miracles begin to happen. Why is it that you've sung all these lovely Christian songs, nothing has happened in your life? Why, you yourself don't even have joy. You are not happy. And what I've discovered is that there are people that even if God gives them the whole world, they will still be unhappy. Because they want more and more and more. More and more and more. Hallelujah. Kitty Kai Mary speaking. Yeah, we, we are still we are still on the conference. We are still on. Yeah, we are still on. But we will soon be ending. Like 30 minutes will be done. Okay. See, that is how it goes. When you really need something so bad, you press on for it. That's how God shows up. I know people who call the ministry. They call me to pray for them. If I tell them, call me back. In one hour, they will never call back. I'm just like, thank you, Jesus. Just take one little thing and their behavior shows. And those who really want it will follow Jesus. Even when Jesus doesn't want to do anything for them, they will keep pressing him, talking to him. I want it. I need it. And then he acts. That's, that's why I don't blame God. I don't blame God why you can pray all you can pray and God will not answer because he's watching to see your behavior. And God is very good at that. I like God for one thing. When you ask him for something, he will refuse to give it to you at that time because he's watching you to see whether you really want it, how bad you want it, how precious that thing is for you. Or whether it's just the next thing. Next. It was easy for you to get so next. Let me tell you. Even the devil. Before the devil give you anything that is of importance. You work for it. I'm serious. He will put you through a task. Because the devil also knows. How God operates. That God will never want to give you anything. That he knows you are going to regard it as common. He won't. And the devil knows that too. That's why when you go to the witch doctor, they will tell you, you are going to bring this. You are going to bring this. How much you are going to bring? If you don't bring it, they don't lose their sleep. They don't care. They tell you, go to somebody else. Why? Because they want you to, whatever medic medicine, whatever voodoo, they are going to make for you. They want you to believe in it. They want you to hold it very, very sacred. 
They want you to attach importance to it. That's why they make you do that. So you cannot just, don't tell me that you can just walk into a witch doctor or an astrologer and say, hello, my name is just, I'm, I'm Sandra. Can you just look into the crystal ball for me? Forget it. The person will tell you, come on, get away here with your disrespect. You sit down, you familiarize, they familiarize to make sure whether that's the kind of thing they can do for you. They want to fill you out and then you pay for it. And then sometimes even after paying, they will tell you to come back so and so time. They are going to do certain things and then they will be able to see for you. That's the way they do it. Many, many, many people that consult psychic, you see the way they do it. You cannot call a psychic hotline and just say, Hi, can you see my future for me? You go and pay first. Shining is the reason God wants to trust you with his Holy Spirit so that you can love, so that you can be joyful and not live in your past. Living in your past is very, very destructive. The reason why we are starting with this thing today, shining, is because the Son of God paid a great price he paid a great price for us to become who he is. Because he came to be, to take our place so that we can become more like him, more like God's image and likeness. Are you a happy person? Or a sad person. That's going to determine whether you're a Christian or not. Are you someone that takes things easy? When Jesus was not accepted in a place, what did he do? I learned that very quickly. He didn't stay there to take them to court. He didn't fight them. He moved to somewhere else. Read the Bible, you'll see it. Except in rare cases where he stood back and he talked to them. Very few places. I learned quickly. Many of you, you know something is not going to work. You will remain in that place fighting and quarreling with people forever. If something will not work, go to somewhere where it works for you. Why be miserable in life? God is calling you to a life whereby you take life easy. And as I said before, many of you do not have jobs, do not have marriage, do not have the wealth of this world because of the way you see life. You see life from the negative side only. And that is why negative people keep coming to you. Negative things keep happening to you. Because that is what gives you energy. That's what makes you happy. If there's nobody to blame, if there's nobody to quarrel with, you are not happy. If there's no bad thing happening, you are not happy. Then you are not a child of God. I always ask, there was a guy that came to me and told me that uh, he went to jail or went to prison because he was at the wrong place at the, right, at the wrong time. He was on, at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that's why they framed him up. Okay, he came out and then something happened again. And then he told me again it was because he was 
at the wrong place as they listen to me. Why are you not at the right place at the right time? Sometimes. Why are you always caught in the wrong place? That shows that you are a wrong person. Your spirit is a wrong spirit and you, your behavior is wrong. You keep attracting, you, you have been attracted to wrong places. Something pulls you. So you love that kind of life now. What are you doing at one o'clock midnight out there? Why are you not at your bed sleeping? Or at a job working? If you are somebody that is active in the night, why not have a night job? But at one o'clock, two o'clock, you are walking the street. And then when the cops catch you, you tell them, oh, it's because I'm black or because I'm white. That's why the black cop is putting me to jail. Or because I'm black, that's why the white cop is putting me to jail. Why are you not at home? Everyone is at home. Why are you there? What are you doing there? And then your sisters and your brothers will all come to support you that they, they've given you wrong justice. Why were you not at home? At that time of the night, what are you doing out there? That's what we are talking about. You are attracting what you shouldn't be attracting. Negative attraction. There have been people that I have prayed a job into their life and they got a job that quick. Then God told me it's not going to last. I said, why? He said, because you've not yet dealt with the person's behavior. The people have prayed for them to have a husband and a, or a wife. And God told me it's not going to last. I said, why? He said, because you've not dealt with the behavior of the person who asked you to pray for this. It's not going to last. And they didn't. And then they came back to me and said, we don't know it's witches. I said, no, it's not witches. You are the witch. You are the witch. He said, how am I a witch? He said, because you are the one that destroyed the marriage. You are the one that took yourself out of that job. Your behavior has destroyed the job. The marriage. Okay, look at you. You were crying. You were crying. I need God to give me a wife. I need God to give you a wife. And you came to me and I prayed a wife into your life. The same guy, after the wedding, two weeks after the wedding, he was telling the wife when they had a little boy, he said, I can always do without a woman. I don't need a woman in my life. That's what he said when he was angry. And I want to hear what you say when you are angry because that tells me the real thing. Don't tell me it's because you were angry. No, that is coming from the bottom of your heart. You were crying, you need a, a wife, and then a wife came two weeks after that. You are telling the whole world, hey, I can do without a woman. I have lived all this time without a woman. You have no respect for a woman. And you want to marry one. Same thing. I have prayed a, a husband into, into a woman's life. And I was there that day with the husband helping them to pick up something and put in the car. And I heard the woman saying loudly to her children, you know, I've, I've, I've always lived without no man. I can always do without one. That was the woman that was crying for me. I, and I learned my lesson is not everything people want that you give to them. Because you give them, sometimes you give them what they are crying for. They are only crying for it because of emotion. Why not just have a friend? Why do you want to make it into a marriage? When you know that you are not good for that kind of business. You have no respect for a man or you have no respect for a woman. Your mom didn't have any respect for anybody. Your father didn't have any respect for any woman. And you learn that quickly. And then you still want to be in a relationship and be destroying people's lives. That's not fair. That is not fair at all. Messing other people's lives. 
Where is your shining? God want to anoint you with a shining. In the shining is the ability to take things easy and ability to be happy, always smiling, always joyful. When evil things happen, it doesn't take long. You overcome it and keep moving on. And keep smiling and keep happy. People of God, I never was paid for being sad. I have never been paid for being misery. I have never been paid for being bitter. I have never been paid for quarreling with people. I have never been paid for working with people. I have never been paid for being sick. I have never been paid for failure and disappointment. I have never been paid for being broke. If you have been, good luck to you. I have never been. Therefore, everything that has not been of help to me, I want to let them go. Another thing, people who come into your life who are not bringing you joy, why are you keeping them? Dear Father, we thank you for starting this day like this with us because you are not just a goody goody god you are mighty you are powerful you want to give and trust us with life and power and money and material resources that we will value and we will keep including revelation of the word we value the word. We value your power. I do. This is hard. But Lord, we want to move away from this hard stuff. To the, to the bigger things. Rearrange and reshape our behavior. So that it will not come into conflict and combat with the anointing. We ask this in the name of Jesus. We need the anointing. But Lord, we do not want the anointing to destroy us. Or we do not want you to take it away. Lift it up from us. I will see everyone by 9 p.m. tonight. I am so happy for what is going to happen these five days. Beginning from today till... 12 midnight on Monday. I am so happy you have no idea what God has in store for you and for me. This is the time that I get everything I want in life. In prayer. That's why I've decided to dedicate these five days to do what God asked me to be doing as far back as 1985 when I was a 14-year-old boy. Or so. I think so. I go back to that place. Benny Hinn used to fast and spend Saturday with God. And along the way, he slipped out of him. And God told him, go back to be doing that practice. Because that's where the power is from. I have asked you that uh, during this um, during these five days, find some time to call me. I will pray with you and speak a word of blessing over you. So I will see you if you own business investment. If you have your family members, tell them to call me, and I will be praying for people and ministering to them. So that's what I'll be doing. So after Monday, I think I might shut down the ministry for a while. We will not have any conference, any conferences for a while for me to restructure a lot of stuff. But please make good use of the opportunity from today, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's interesting. The heaven is now open. Father, thank you for an open heaven. Thank you very much. Lord, connect us with what you are doing back in Jerusalem. Connect us, Lord, with what you are doing in every part of the earth. 
let the divine visitation come to us, divine manifestation and divine demonstration. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye-bye. See you.